Hi there. My name is Anna, and today's class is a perfect little sequence that you can do after a hike or if you've been cycling, done a spin class, um, probably even running as well. So I really like to hike and I do spin classes as well. So these are some of my favorite moves to really work the hips, the legs, and a little bit of um, the upper back from kind of being in a bit more of this hunched over position. So you will need a block if you've got one handy. If you don't have one, it's not gonna be a problem at all. So let's get started. So we'll start off on our backs. And if you have your block here, you can go ahead and grab it. And we're just gonna set our feet up for a bridge pose. So about hips width apart there. And then place your palms just right at the top of your thighs and begin to scoop your tailbone toward your heels as you just start to push your thighs forward. And we'll keep that feeling, keep the tailbone scooping down and lift your hips up there. Now you can take the block. I'm gonna do it on its lowest setting here. And you can slide that block under your sacrum. So that's gonna be right at the base of the spine. So you do want your glutes to be off the block a little bit. The tailbone is still lengthening down. And then let's just place the fingers in the hip creases here. And we're just gonna bring the right hip up, or the right knee up, and set the foot down. Left knee up, and down. Now you can imagine, right in the front of your pelvis, like you're drawing those two pelvic points together. That's gonna isolate the movement more in your hip. Let's bring the right knee up, keep the fingers in the hip crease, and just begin to internally and externally rotate. So if you were cycling, and a little less so with hiking, but still the general idea, you're probably moving in a very much forward-oriented, repetitive position. So we're just getting some movement in the hip and some other directions there. You can set the right foot down and lift the left knee up. We're deepening that left hip crease with the fingers just doing some internal and external rotation. And set that left foot down. Now let's take your arms, reach them straight up toward the ceiling, or the ceiling. <laughs> the left hand pulls the right fingers back. Getting a little bit of opening through the wrist and into the forearm as well. And switching sides. Nice. Now lift your hips up off the block and then slowly lower all the way down. I'm gonna come around into a tabletop here. And in your tabletop, set up with your shoulders over your wrist and your hips over your knees. Let's bring your right hand behind your head. We're gonna do this little open the book move. So we'll exhale, point your right elbow down. Inhale, push the floor away with the left hand and just begin to turn your ribs. Exhale, right elbow down. Inhale, push the floor away and open the ribs. Keep going there at your own pace. And just notice we're not cranking um, the gaze or the head up to look at the ceiling. We're just allowing the ribs to turn you. Noticing that, that might be a little bit um, less movement when we really isolate it there. So let's switch sides here. So right hand down, left hand behind your head. Exhale, left elbow points down. Inhale, push the floor away. Turn the chest. Inhale, open up. Couple more there. Notice that right shoulder isn't rolling forward. 
keeping that snuggled back. Awesome. And then bring your left hand uh, back down to the floor. If it's comfortable for you, you can tuck your toes under here. And let's just sit back, kind of a high child's pose. And if it's too much for you to come back that far, right, you could stay up a little bit higher and maybe just do some gentle rocks forward and back. You could also have the toes um, untucked to the top of the foot on the floor. Now just feel your breath out into your ribs and up into your back. And we'll come forward into tabletop again. If you have your blocks here, you can always um, do downward facing dog with your hands on blocks. But otherwise, spread the fingers nice and wide. Push down into the floor with the root of your index finger. Let's tuck your toes under and pike your hips up here. And then just let your head relax. Give it a little, maybe rock side to side, forward and back. I always encourage bending of the knees, lifting in the hip creases. We're holding the front ribs in. Now let's take the top of your right foot and bring it onto the floor there. Ooh. So we're getting that whole top of the foot up into the shin as well. I always find this one to be pretty intense, especially after I have been on a hike. So take your time with this one. And we'll set the right foot down, go onto the top of your left foot. And then sit that left foot down. So let's just start to walk feet forward toward our hands. And we'll rise all the way up to stand there. <laughs> so let's take an inhale here. Bring your arms forward and up. And as you exhale, sit back into your hip creases. Spine stays long. Hands can be on blocks or on the floor. We'll step the right foot back. Lower the knee and come onto the top of your right foot. So we're in a half kneeling position here. The right hip is directly over the knee. And then you can take your left hand to the front of the, um, front of the right hip, it's right pelvic point, and bring your right arm straight up toward the ceiling. Start to wrap that right glute down toward the floor. And then with this left hand, you could almost kind of drag upward there. This is going to be a great way to stretch your hip flexors and we're really approaching it from this place of support and strength rather than just kind of like laying into the hip here. And then bring your hands down to the floor or your blocks if you've got them. Tuck the right toes under and lift the back knee. So we've got length in the spine, this right glute is still working and we'll just begin to rock forward and back on the right toes. and hold that here. We'll plant the hands and step back into downward facing dog. Push the floor of the blocks away with your hands. Step the right foot forward. You can always kind of give that lower leg a little bit of a hand there. Lower the left knee, come onto the top of the foot. Right hand pushes on this front, left pelvic point, left arm comes up. Now lengthening and kind of wrapping that left glute under as you slightly pull up with the right hand. Feel your breath there. Bring both hands down to the floor, tuck the back toes under, lift the knee, and we'll just start that rock again, forward and back. Pushing into that left big toe mound. Left glute is staying on. Both hands come down. We'll bring the left foot next to the right. You can always be up on your fingertips there if you need as well. And rise to stand. 
bring the arms forward and up. Sit back into the hip creases, spine is long. Step your left foot back this time. Lower the left knee and keep the toes tucked under if that's okay here. Let's bring both arms up toward the ceiling. Lightly drag your left toes or your back toes forward and feel that left glute wrapping down toward the floor. We'll bring the left hand down to the floor. You can also have it on a block there. Hug this left shoulder down and in, and then we'll turn in the ribs a little bit to the right. You can bring the right arm up. Let that left ear soften toward the shoulder. You're welcome to stay here or lift up off that back knee. And if it would feel nice for you, you can start to push down into this right big toe mound and maybe begin to straighten that right leg just a little bit. Once again, that might just be too intense for where you are right now, so just keep the knee bent. Nice. So bring the right hand down to the floor and we're gonna keep the fingers somewhat over toward um, that front foot. As you pivot on the feet, parallel your feet and sit back into your left hip crease. So we're doing a side lunge with the hands somewhat over toward that right foot. And feel your breath moving up into that left side waist. Turn back around to face the front and step the right foot back to meet the left downward facing dog. Step the left foot forward, lower the right knee, but keep the toes tucked under here and bring your arms straight up. Feel the right glute wrapping down and the right toes kind of isometrically dragging forward, which means they don't move, but you feel that action of pulling the right toes toward you. Right hand will land on the floor. You can grab your block if you need it. Hug this right shoulder in, lean back into the shoulder blade. Left arm comes up. Let your right ear soften toward the shoulder. Maybe you lift the back knee. Maybe if it feels like it would enhance this pose for you, you can start to push into that left big toe mound and maybe just straighten out that left leg a little bit. But you're listening to what your body needs right now. Left hand comes down. We're going to keep the fingers somewhat over toward the front of the mat, parallel the feet, and sit back into the right hip crease. Feel the breath in the right side. And we'll turn back around to the front and step the right foot up next to the left. So let's come on down to a seat. We're gonna do a little hip opener here. So I'll show you two options. The first option, if you don't have a block or if your hips are just feeling really tight, um, you will just cross the right shin in front of the left shin. I am mirroring you here. So right shin in front of the left shin. You could stay right here. You could even prop your hips up um, on a blanket or towel or something like that. And just start to come forward until you feel a pull kind of around your glutes, your outer hips. So option one. Option two. Can take your block, set it on its lowest, um, its lowest setting here, and then we'll take, let me see, this right ankle and shin on top. So we're coming in line with this kind of outer border of the block. 
and then your left shin will come down on the floor and you kind of wrap the left ankle around the lower edge of that block. And then same thing, you could stay right here or start to come forward a bit. And so wherever you are there, just aiming for that length in the spine. And just nice and slowly you can start to come back up there and we'll just switch sides so you're either doing left shin in front of right shin or I'll turn this way to you so you can see up we're taking that left ankle and shin on top of the block and then this right shin on the floor so that the ankle kind of curls around the bottom edge of the block and you can just start to fold forward a little bit there. Slowly make your way on out of that one. And let's take the block off to the side there if you have it. And we're gonna finish with my favorite poses, legs up the wall. This feels so good after working a lot of lower legs. Um, so if you have a blanket or a towel or a pillow or a bolster, um, definitely go ahead and grab that. Um, so if you do have one, I'm gonna take my blanket and just fold it up like that, um, but you can really play around with what feels good. So you're gonna come up to a wall or a bed or a couch and slide up against the wall here. You're gonna take the legs up and then slide that blanket, pillow, bolster, whatever you've got, right underneath your sacrum. So we're just getting a little bit of support for the pelvis. And now the closer you all are to the wall, the more um, of a stretch it's going to be. So if it's too much, you can always bend your knees a little bit or move slightly away from the wall. And then let your arms just relax there. You can soften your eyes if that's comfortable for you. And just noticing the steady rhythm of your breath. And acknowledging this amazing vessel of your body that can move and breathe. It's 
support you in all of these different ways. As you're ready, just begin to walk your feet down the wall a bit. And you can roll over to your side. And take a moment or two there. And we'll meet back up. Sit in a comfortable seat. And take a moment, feel, notice the difference. And bringing your hands together and just offering your body that sense of gratitude. for all of the ways in which it moves you throughout the day. Not something to take for granted. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for doing this practice with me. I hope you feel refreshed um, in your lower body, especially. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and you can hit subscribe so that you never miss new classes that get posted. Thank you again so, so much, and I'll see you next time.